Welcome back here at the Regions Tradition. And well, wait a while. What? I'm supposed to say welcome back here at the Regions Tradition because I'm the interviewer, he's the coach. We're going to interview Coach Paul Feinbaum today. I guess, I guess you, since you are a member of the media now, you're entitled to it. So yeah, coach. so my first question to you is, is, you know, my biggest concern is the state of college football, where it's going, how we're going to get there. Uh, I've got the best interest of the players, you know, at heart, but also competitive balance and also keeping all the sports viable and playing, women's sports, you know, non-revenue sports. So what's the solution? Well, I think, I think, Coach, there is a solution to the question. And if you'll bear with me for a second, I, I, I know you're, you can be impatient every once in a while as an interviewer because you've watched me a few times. Um, That's like the pot calling the kettle black. <laughs> I, think the, I think the solution to college football is this. You need to quit wasting time being on TV, and you need to to be what everybody in, in my business has suggested, you need to be the czar of college football. So if you'll agree to that right now, I think we can solve a lot of problems. Yeah, but there's problems that have to be solved. I mean, there's lawsuits that have to be solved. Okay. Um, and until we get all that in order, we're not gonna be able to have, you know, some kind of protocol of rules and who governs those rules so that we don't have litigation problems and we don't have Title IX issues moving forward. I'm for the players getting paid. I just want it to be a system where everybody has a competitive balance so we don't lose the spirit of college football. I don't know if I'm allowed to ask a question, but... Um, yeah, as a coach you are. I've asked you a few questions before. <laughs> By the way, uh, I can reveal it now. You weren't the easiest interview. Well, let me just tell you, you remember the time when I first came to Alabama, I tried to teach you how to play defensive I back? I You're not the easiest that. guy to coach either. I'm just... <laughs> well, I, right as, as of this hour, I am only seven national championships behind you. But the day's young. Seriously, coach, once, you, once college football can solve the issue that you talked about, and I think that's underway, you know, you know more than I do, then what? Well, I think we need to solve the lawsuits, okay. the lawsuit issues, and then we probably need some federal legislation so that we can operate that protects us from litigation and protects us with Title IX, and protects Title IX. Title IX is opportunity, equal opportunity right. for women's sports. I'm all for that. I want that. Um, but you can't, I don't know if we can pay everybody and keep all the sports that we have now. So that's going to be a, a, a problem that we'll have to address in the future. I know this is something important to you because uh, Senator Tuberville was by here and I know he, he's told us uh, that you and Joe Manchin and others have worked diligently on this, but do you see any activity up there? Um, and, and if not, what do we do in the interim? No, I think that I've been three times and each time there's a greater awareness and more people are paying attention to try to come up with solutions to the problems. And I, I think we have a lot of really good people, you know, doing that. I think Commissioner Sankey is really doing a good job. I think the Commissioner of the Big Ten is doing a good job. I think the combination of the two of them have done a really good job of educating people in Washington of, you know, how we might be able to come to some solution. But everybody's going to have to give a little bit to get it done. You, you've you been there. You were there a couple of weeks ago. Uh, is there anything else that can be done other than talking to them? Because, I mean, these are politicians, and they often go which way the wind is blowing. Well, and, and I think that in all due respect, you know, it is an election year, so everybody's got to take that into consideration. Right. Um, but I do think people are working on it, and I'm actually encouraged by what people are trying to get done and how people are listening, and um, I, I think there's a lot of positive things happening right now. I know we, we talked uh, about TV, and, uh, and that is something that you're, you'll be doing, but you do, uh, I, I know, talk to people at, at every level, uh, and I'm not trying to inject you into something that you don't want to be in, but I know you do. I know how much you care. Is, what else can, do you think you can do to influence this? Because you, I, I'm not, we don't need to say any more times than we've said the, the amount of influence that you carry in the sport. It's, it's, it's beyond anybody's imagination. Well, but I think the spirit of college football has always been to help players have a chance to be more successful in life because of the lessons you teach, 
you know, where coaches or teachers, teachers is inspiring learning um, so that they, you know, can develop the right habits so that they have a better chance to be successful in life. So I, I think that, you know, whatever system we come up with, we, we can't change the spirit because right now we have changed the spirit to some degree. Don't hear people talking about education. You know, when people transfer all the time, that doesn't enhance their chances of graduating. Um, and, you know, more and more people are going to college not to see how much value they can create for their future, but how much they can actually make in their college career. And I'm all for guys making money, uh, but I think it's got to be distributed in a way that's fair and creates a competitive venue that's fair for everybody. Like the NFL, they have a salary cap. Um, you know, if you win, you draft last. If you lose, you draft first. You play a harder schedule if you win. You play an easier schedule if you lose. So they're always trying to create parity because you've got to take the fans into consideration. You know, fans want to see good games. And we do have some outstanding leagues out there, so there's going to be, you know, more competition, better games in the leagues. But to keep a balance in all those teams so that everybody has an equal opportunity to have a chance to have a good team. A lot, a lot of people uh, have, have theorized on on, on your own career and, and your departure, uh, and I, I know you've addressed this a number of times, but how frustrating did it become from a couple of years ago when it began to most recently in dealing with all those things that you just addressed? Well, you know, we just adapted to it, you know, and we actually won, you know, when we had to deal with name, image, and likeness. Sure. Um, you know, I wish we'd have won the playoff game this year, lost it in overtime. I uh, had a good team coming back, but. Um, you know, I didn't want to ride the program down. So tried to hire three coaches. Every one of them wanted to know how long I was going to be there at the end of the season. You know, every recruit wanted to know how long you're going to be here. Well, when you're 72 years old, it's hard, hard, harder to say I'm going to be here for the next four years. But the question I had for a lot of people was how long are you going to be here? Right. Uh, a lot of coaches left uh, for good reason. They got better opportunities because we won. And a lot of players left because they thought they had better opportunities someplace else. So that became more difficult, but we managed it. We got good players out of the portal. We lost some good players in the portal. Uh, I think for Alabama, they've got a lot to overcome in the short term because of the number of players that you know left this year. Yeah, again, the last time I saw you was on January 1st, uh, and you've, you've, you've done other things since then, but you, you look refreshed. You, you, uh, does it feel different not doing what you had been doing your whole life? Yeah, what feels different is I spent my whole life for 50 years being in a hurry. Right. You know, got to do this, got to go see this guy, got to do that, got another home visit. You know, whatever it takes during the season, you know, day in and day out to get prepared for a game and try to get the team prepared. And when I retired, I wasn't in a hurry anymore. <laughs> And really didn't even know what that was like, to be honest with you. And it's been, you know, pretty good. But the first thing I got when I retired the next day, I had a 12 commandments of being retired from Miss Terry, and I've had to live up to those standards. Did, any regrets once you got those commandments? <laughs> uh, we don't win all the time, I can tell you that. I don't know if this is your interview or not, but I, I, unless you have any more questions for me, I deeply appreciate you uh, coming by here. No, I'm, I'm just all for the game of college football and the fans who watch it and support it. Um, and I think there's more and more concerns out there about where we're headed and what we're doing. And I want to try to do whatever I can to help solve that problem. Coach, many thanks. Thank you. Appreciate Coach Nick Saban. We'll be right back. Give me something.